as well. All right. Well, folks, welcome uh, to Faith, Family, and Friends once again. Uh, my good friend James Tang and his dad, Bun Singh. And uh, if you haven't seen the documentary, award-winning documentary that James uh, has done, uh, you had help from another director, a lady. I forget her name right now. Virginia Lynch Dean. Virginia yes, Lynch Dean. A uh, fascinating yeah. movie, 28 minutes long, I believe. It chronicles um, all that his dad went through in the second Killing Fields. And actually, his experience, too, um, which I think he shares more of in the memoir that we want to talk about tonight, you guys have just put together under the Naga Trail. But if you want to see both those interviews that, that we've done here, Faith, Family, Friends, just look them up on YouTube. I know that James and his dad have, have done interviews with other, other groups, organizations, including C-SPAN. I think that was one of the first after the film came out. But this book is fairly new, Under the Naga Tale. And uh, very well written, James. A true story of survival, bravery, and escape from the Cambodian genocide. Um, my lighting in here real good here, but I wanted to just read a little piece while we're waiting for your dad to come on. I'm, I'm here. Oh, you are there. Good. We can hear can you. you. Can you see me? We can't, uh, we see, can't you. see you, but that's if uh, well, we'd like to hear you, but we'd like to hear you and see you if we can. I'm well, not sure. I, mean, I try to. Uh... Oh, you have to pull if over the camera, there might be a cover. Oh, okay. Pull the cover. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Good evening, Vincent. Physical color. Good, good to see you. Good to see you too. This yeah. uh, this book is amazing. I am so sorry that I did not finish it before tonight, and you might have uh, plenty of time, but I have had seven or eight books to read, and of course work at church and and at school. But I I can't put it down um, now that I've started it. Um, it is a riveting tale. Of all that you went through, Bun Singh, um, in growing up as uh, a young man in war torn Cambodia, going through uh, Pol Pot's regime, the Khmer Rouge, and, uh, and then later on, not expecting as you were leaving the country under the, the reign of the freedom fighters um, before heading into Thailand, um, going through another harrowing experience that in some respects was worse than the first killing field. And so maybe James could set us up and then uh, you could kind of review with our audience. I know that we've had you on before and people could go back and look at that interview, but um, for the first timers who are watching tonight, uh, all that you went through, uh, my dad back home in Maine has a saying for people who are strong like you, the indomitable human spirit. And he will, he will say, if he sees somebody that's being strong, He'll shake his head and he'll say, boy, he's tougher than Boyle Lao." So in honor of my dad back home in Maine, I will say that is definitely true about, about you, uh, Bun Singh. And uh, James, um, your pestering of your dad all those years and then how he finally began to share his story and how therapeutic that was. I uh, just he set us up, James, and then we'll let uh, Bun Singh uh, tell his story of, of how that all happened and what a difficult time it must have been. Yeah, we, uh, I guess I'll talk about my personal uh, mm -hmm. reasons for telling the story. Yes. Is although I did know my father had survived the killing fields, um, there was this, and much of the people who survived the war with my father, there was this aspect of just moving on. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew that they suffered terrible things because they would tell us to eat your food um because i survived i had to starve and I, we would have killed for that bit of rice in front of you mm. um it really wasn't until i was coming of age and this is a whole nother story where um i went through some this is in high school i went through some difficult periods mm -hmm. and i felt very much like i was there was no option it was a completely difficult scenario but then it came upon me, um, basically after God that my family and my father particularly were survivors, and I would definitely survive through this. And so, just recollecting or seeing him as like a survivor just gave me hope because yeah. if he had survived that, I, 
I can make it. Mm-hmm. And that that's just stuck with me. And after I got through it, um, in a miracle of its own, I think my father, the story stayed with me because it was, if I was able to get through something like this, I would like to share the story as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took many years. There's also a similar geopolitical climate that was worth speaking into. Our our foreign diplomacy continues to be the same things as it was during the Cold War, mm-hmm. where we try to peacekeep through um, less diplomacy, but more finding friends and financing them with weapons and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. So it was a story of just like trying to speak into those things. Mm-hmm. Um with with the book and going to the history um yeah this is this is many multifaceted parts and the first is just mainly um what happened in cambodia was just an outspill of war that happened in vietnam Mm -hmm. and you had fighters that the u.s was going after into cambodia and they tried to eliminate them by bombing illegally cambodia and a lot of the american public didn't know this it's a total war crime that was done under the Nixon administration and Kissinger. Um, that's just never um, gotten attention, really. And it led to million. It depends on how close the state is, but people would say it could be up to millions because of the loss of livelihood and starvation and things that happen afterwards. Um, more or less, this led to a neutral Cambodia. It, the Cold War is very difficult to stay neutral, and it led to a civil war. And people were like, "We should stay um, allied with the West." The other side says, "They we are against the West. They look at them; they're bombing us." Mm-hmm. Um, and so, what takes place is a civil war, and ultimately, the um, communists on the other side, the extreme ideologues, who were basically just made in the jungles they were they were hardened fighters they won uh, for sure and they took over um and they were much inspired by marxist ideology mm-hmm. by maoist ide- um methodologies and yeah. they said they took it to the furthest extreme and that was admired by many scholars and by many um schools and universities who were sympathetic towards the communist ideals and marxist mm-hmm. ideals because they were saying that Cambodia is going to be the bright shining star of how to actually implement this. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, (laughs) it went wayside terrible. Mm -hmm. And um, there was actually a lack of order within our country that was trying to institute high structure. And it led to the worst genocide of the 20th century, um, Mm. where basically 2 million of a population, I think of six, just by the end of the four four years perished um and this was from 75 to 79 is that correct yeah 75 to 79 yeah Mm -hmm. from sickness starvation illness Mm -hmm. all of the above um Mm -hmm. and this was everybody um and they had to coin a new term for cambodia it was originally genocide and they call it the second worst holocaust since since um you know during the um yeah hitting the jews and in, in all, all of Europe, um, mm-hmm. this they they end up coining a new name called autogenocide because there was it started off with um, going after s- certain people. Mm-hmm. It was educated those who wore glasses. If if you wore glasses, you're eliminated. Mm-hmm. Um, teachers, doctors, lawyers, all of those who represented modern society. And then it didn't stop there. The the monster just kept going. Mm-hmm. The regime just kept going after everybody. Yeah. Um, so that's the term they created autogenocide where it was just senseless killing of all people um, at the end there now that's the first part of the story which I knew uh, and our families knew the second part is as horrifying as this first one is is that uh, many people like my father fled Cambodia um, to a country called Thailand which is transliterated as free land Thai means free and their hope was to find resettlement in a new country. Cambodia was just so worn, war torn, devastated. Uh, the threat of communism was still there over uh, a new Vietnamese uh, takeover. Um, so they feared more hostility going forward. And then suddenly, what 
what takes place is a humanitarian crisis, a, a border crisis that um, that actually many, like my father who survived, it says those several weeks was worse than four years under Pol Pot. That's there. hard to believe. Wow. Very hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's funny is that this section of the story, even much to today, decades later, has been very rarely scarcely documented. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I heard that story, uh, uh, probing, um, I said to my dad, this story yeah. has to be told. Yeah. It's it, it's of it, essential human value here. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are here today. Wow. And we originally, I'll, I'll add, we originally started with the book. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I, Pastor Ackley, yesterday yeah. on April, I think it was, um, tomorrow will be the 13 year anniversary in which we started writing the book. Really? Uh, wow. Yes, it'll be tomorrow officially. So. so this book is actually, you began this, this is older than the documentary. Then. Yes, yes. Wow. It was much older than the documentary. Yeah. And wow. it's a long journey. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Prayers, sweat and tears there. Incredible. Wow. To have gone through both experiences, Ben saying, and to come out the other side, it, it must have been, it does something to you psychologically. So that strength that I know that you you have in your own heart and mind to experience both of those uh, times in your life, those seasons, and have to finally be leaving your war-torn country, the conflicting emotions you must have had, um, it could never go back to what it was um, when things were better. And then there was, there was a time when things were better because I'm reading about it and I know you shared uh, last time when, um, but nature abhors a vacuum. And so when leadership leaves, another leadership comes in and the heart of man is desperately wicked, the scriptures tell us. And so we think the new regimes are gonna bring us prosperity and hope and freedom, but then when it doesn't, um, can you share with us how you made it through all those years and how difficult it was to be up and down these cycles of, of trauma? And you you even experienced the first killing fields, what, 40 days of torture? I think I was watching the uh, ghost story again tonight just to, to um, review things, but go ahead. Well. Uh in the book that is, it rolls about uh, what happened to me is uh, after a separation from my dad, uh, they sent me far away from, from the village uh, to work on uh, front lines mm -hmm. and hard works every single day without any food. Um, so, but anyway, that I, uh, I was with my father mm -hmm. and my father, uh, was living uh, in in a small town that I need to go to see him. But during that time, um, you have you have to have a permission from them to travel, even a mile from where you live. You cannot travel freely any place that you want to go. So mm -hmm. uh, if you get <clears throat> caught by no permission from them, uh, your punishment would be killed. They would kill you. So I asked for their permission. They would not give it to me. So I, mm -hmm. I, uh, then I, I am, I'm escaped mm -hmm. without, without permission. So, so I'm escaped and, uh, somehow I didn't make it to, uh, to my hometown, my father's town. So I get caught. So they sent me to, uh, to, uh, a, a concentrate camp. Mm -hmm. So in, in the concentrate camp there, the, uh, they actually tortured me and made me work hard and no food. So uh, the, the people that in the concentrate camp that they got there before me, they actually worked them to death. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I am kind of lucky and thank God that I mm -hmm. was in the concentrate camp for around 40 something days. And then the Vietnamese liberated uh, the country. So uh, that's how I get out from the uh, from the concentrate camp. So, and uh, so I reunited with my my father, and I uh, then we escaped because my whole family decided that we have to get out of the country. Mm 
-hmm. get out of Cambodia. So we escaped it to neighbor country like Thailand. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was lived near Thai country before, and I was speak fluent in Thai. And um, for me to escape it, to go to Thailand, that's one of our hope that we can start some kind of life yes. in, a, in another country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when we, when we make it to a, a, a refugee camp in Thailand, mm -hmm. and one of the best time that we had because we, uh, we feel that we're not gonna be get killed or starving by, uh, by the Khmer rules. It yeah. turned out to be that a month later, a month later that we was live in a refugee camp, the Thai government secretly uh, bring the buses to alongside to the refugee camp and force us into the bus. And uh, we refused to get on the bus because we don't want to go back to Cambodia. Right. And we, uh, we, we try not to get on the bus and we are uh, human change it about 15 or 2000 of the refugee in the refugee camp. We are human change it. We, would, we don't want to get on the bus, but somehow they, they, uh, uh, they torture us. They grab little children and they grab people that could not fight for them. And they, they, they threw them in the buses and, and they throw us, 14 hour in that day. Mm. And uh, so they, they put us on the top of the mountain. Uh, when we get there, we don't even know where we are. Mm. Uh, because uh, when we was escaped the first time to Thailand, it's only less than two hour uh, a, a bus ride to get to the refugee camp. Now they drove us 14 hours that we have no clue where they put us to. So we, so when they, uh, when we arise, so it's just, it's not just us, it's 43,000 refugees was forced to the wow. mountain. Wow. And, That's crazy. and they, uh, we didn't realize until we stepped out from the buses and we are actually on top of the mountain and they told us where to go. And a lot of, a, a lot of young and old people, they, they, they cannot move fast enough and they just shoot them right there and kill them right there. Mm. So they gun us down to the mountain, to the cliff. And it turned out to be the bottom of the mountain is surrounded with landmines because the, mm -hmm. the mountain is called probably here mountain is a mountain between uh, between Cambodia and Thai's border. So uh, everybody put landmine to protect their, their, their territory. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's 43,000 refugees that rushed to the mountain and thousands of them are lost their life right there. And we have no water, we have no food. Uh, we water one is a bigger part for us because uh, we cannot find any water. So we actually uh, try to get, to go get water. So that's what the most land by is because they, they put so much land by around, around where, where we try to get water. And, and we, have, we have no food. If we go, if we climb up back to the mountain, uh, the Thai soldier would, Gun us down. Mm -hmm. So if we go down, we will we will uh, expose the landmine. We will we will kill. So, so we, between yeah. landmines and the soldiers with the guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so um, so we was myself. I was in a, on the mountains about I think around ten or twelve days. So we ran out food. Uh, we decided that we. Is only surviving that we think that we we have to try out find our way back to Cambodia. Mm. So we have no clues where we are because we are in the middle of jungle. We can't even uh, we we can't even see the sun. Is uh. that 
the, the brush is so thick that we can even see the sun. So, so uh, to, uh, to find our way back to Cambodia, the only way that we have to find and be safe, we have to walk past the dead body. That is always, it's always explode. Mm -hmm. they, those people also always step the landmine. So we feel safer to walk past on the dead body. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You had so, no other choice. No other choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So and because it's so many refugees, people walk through that area. So we have to make sure we are step on it on the same part, mm -hmm. if we step out a different part, we would explode with the yeah. landmine. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So the traffic, the traffic of the human traffic is terrible because uh, yeah. people are diving and, and, and the smell is horrible. Mm -hmm. And it took us about seven or eight hours to get past to that lend my and mm -hmm. yes that's amazing so, and so when you when you finally reached um where did you end up coming out and how were you rescued at that point well uh we uh actually get through the landmine and uh it took us actually uh three months cool. through yeah. through the jungle mm. Um, a lot of people wonder what are we eating, what are we finding, what are we what are we be able to survive for three months. So we pretty much that we eat everything that we can we can find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so for me, uh, three months that I make it a second escape to uh, to Thailand again after after we go through the landmines. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yes, three months time. It's crazy. And American, there were American organizations that were able to rescue you and resettle you at that point. You get into uh, Thailand. On the second, on the second escape that we make it, uh, I say we, including my brother and mm -hmm. my nephew, and we make it to a refugee camp and another refugee camp, and uh, we were. We were caught again before we entered uh, that refugee camp, mm. and they about to send us back to Cambodia. Mm. Well, uh, thank God, and luckily that day we have a, a Red Cross mm -hmm. and came on time and rescued us and get us put us on a mm. on a mini van and drove us away from the. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's crazy. Yeah. Um, something that we didn't talk about last time, and I been emailing James, your son, about this, this piece that I know is important to you and to, to your son, um, the issue of, of faith, uh, making it through all that you went through. We could give credit to the indomitable spirit that is in the human being, and I think there's, there's, uh, there's a rationale to that, obviously. I think it's something that a higher power that God has given us, but um, there must have been times when you you had to look to him and and maybe you could talk about your journey of faith how you came to faith through this because some people would say well you might as well give up on god when he makes you go through these kinds of harrowing times how can there be a god there are people that would ask that question and have and wonder well god makes so many people suffer i don't want to believe in a god like that what would you say to those kind of people? I'm asking this question rhetorically, obviously. Being a pastor, I don't believe that. But your story and your faith, uh, your discovery of faith is an encouragement to us all. Um, can you speak to how that that whole journey came to be and and and, and looking back on that time? Uh, was it really luck, was it? No, it wasn't luck. I mean, uh, uh, that I was suffers and been through a lot. And many times I talk to a God, but I don't know which God. I always say, God, we, I'm suffering mm. so much and just show me and uh, help me. Yeah. And 
I'm talking to someone and, and God, God listened to me. God yes. really listened to me, but I did not find God until I came to the U.S. Mm-hmm. And uh, the story about my sister, that's my second sister, and she lost her husband up the, the mountain mm. and she escaped to the refugee camp in Thailand called Khao Dam. Mm-hmm. So as soon as she get into the refugee camp, she opened her heart and accept Christ right away. And uh, she the first person accept Christ. Mm-hmm. She go to church, she's singing because our religion is not singing. We never yeah. sing, we always chanting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and we look at her and kind of, wow, she, she's happy, but it's kind of strange. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of strange for, for, for her, for us, because uh, what I say strange is like a different kind of religions. Right, right. Uh, uh, what I say, uh, uh, different kind of religion because she's praying mm-hmm. and uh, she's singing and uh, she has so much joy yeah. in her heart. And uh, we look at her, we say, first we say she's kind of weird. <laughs> and <laughs> and she, she keep telling us, no, I'm not weird. Mm-hmm. I've been looking for a true God for a long, long time. Now, finally, I found it. Mm-hmm. I found it. Yeah. And, and, and slowly, she tried to explain to us what is the true God, the God that created the whole world. So, mm-hmm. uh, so one by one, one by one, and we, uh, my family become a Christian. So I would, yeah, yeah. So That's my story. sister, my second sister is the first one that I said yeah. Christ. So yeah. what, a, what a story. What a story. <laughs> and I'm so glad to have finally heard that, uh, not being able to get to that last time we talked, uh, the first time that James was on. And uh, <clears throat> of course, we have some other stories that, with this church that we've shared. So I just want to get to the bottom of that. I think it's so important. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, God gave me a word. Every year, it gives me a word. <clears throat> and one, and a couple of years ago, he gave me a word for the new year. And it's a word that he told me I would never stop needing. And the word was strength. And since then, since the first time he gave me that word, I've met you guys and heard your story. And it's actually helping me gain strength and to be less apt to complain when I when I read and, and hear about stories such as yours about saying and know of others too of course and really prepares our hearts for what may come to our world in, in the near future if we believe the book of revelation you know that a lot of people think God's going to take us out before the hard times but I'm not so sure we have to be ready either way and those of you who like yourself and there's so many others who've gone through uh, similar circumstances like survivors of the Holocaust and different, uh, you know, persecution of Christians and other third world nations that's happening at a breakneck speed, even now as we speak. And it's only made their faith stronger. And look back and wonder how it could, but it, the Lord's there to help us, isn't he? Praise God. So tell us um, how the book is doing and how long it's been uh, out in print, James. And are you doing a book tour with this, the two of you? The book's been out since February 7th. Okay. Um, and it's been doing well. It, it's gotten, uh, initially when it came out and released, it was in its top, in its category for, on Amazon. So like survival, oh, cool. um, Southeast Asia mm-hmm. um, and stuff. And then we've gotten uh, interviews as yourself and then with several other people. There was the new school in New York City. Um, they did an online magazine excerpt and then they took us part of it and put it on their website. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have two events coming up in May. We'll be at the Roosevelt house of public policy, at Hunter college in New York city mm-hmm. um, to show the film. And we'll have a panel speaking. Um, we're inviting people who are involved in refugee work Great. to talk about the political climate today. And to just tie in this past history to today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that'd be a good way to really just tell the story. Yeah. Um, I'm going to in Connecticut, a, a middle school as well, 
uh, around the same time to share the story. There are many people who have reached out to me for book clubs as mm -hmm. well. And then, um, so we, we've had opportunities to do that. The last is uh, we have an event. We were invited to a, one of the biggest book events in the East Hamptons in August. Mm -hmm. So we'll, it's 2,500 people. Um, we get to sign and um, the books there and get exposure. Uh, so we're thrilled for those. In terms of a uh, book tour, we're, I'm a I I'm a little bit side saddled here with other things. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, we like the, we, we like the internet and in many in, for the things it does here, which allows me to connect with people without actually having to physically be there. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that's right. been good. Like having an interview with yourself. Yeah. That's um, awesome. So we're taking advantage of that first. That's good. That's good. But a 13 year process. Uh, tell, tell our audience how it must feel to finally have put it together and see that the book is making a difference in people's lives and inspiring them. I, 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 I'm a writer myself and I tend toward the nonfiction. So when I read something that's true for me, I, I like fiction's great, but when you read a story and you, you know, the characters are real and the plot uh, really did happen, it becomes such an inspiration for other people. Does that give you a good feeling of how that God may have used your, your own testimony about saying, and, and you, pestering your dad, James, that it was worth it all these years. <laughs> uh, I mean, God is amazing because uh, as soon as I step in this country and I say to myself, I want to tell the, uh, the world one day, yeah. it's not just about my story, it's about a million of people in Cambodia yes. and also about the second killing field on the mountain. Mm -hmm. 13,000 of them lost their life. Mm -hmm. So I say one day I want to tell the whole world about yeah. what happened to, to me and to millions of the people. Yes. And I could not find anybody to do the books. Uh, and James come along and he say, Pa, I, I, I can do the book for you. I can write. I say, no. Uh, how, he's, he's a making born. He cannot understand how I lived through. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so that was a little bit of a, <laughs> yeah. Do you find the result that? <laughs> I see. He, he keeps asking me, he keeps asking me many, many times. I say, I don't think you understand what I lived through. Mm. And you are complaining that, you know, the fruits don't taste good and the mattress is too hard for you. And uh, things that you complain and I lived through five years and mm -hmm. sleep on the ground. And I said, yeah. I don't think I do the book, but eventually that I, yeah. I give in. And Good. I, I'm really proud of him. He did a great job. <laughs> you guys both did a good job. God, God actually brought him yes. to, to do the book because I, I was looking for somebody to do the book, not, not my own son. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So God had his way, which is- yeah. God had his way, yeah. Oh, he's good. <laughs> yeah james any last thoughts no, the same thing praise god on that because yeah. i would never have started this book if it wasn't that experience and then also given the images of my father's survivor mm -hmm. and just the nudge to tell the story mm -hmm. um and i think uh who knows what happens long term but right now i get stories from reviews from people or people reaching out by email mm -hmm. how much it it affects them and how much they resonate with it. Mm -hmm. um, it gives them just a perspective on life, really. Yes. Um, so right now, so I'm, I think for my father, it's been very good for him to read all the reviews that have come through. That's good. Uh, and yeah. to just feel that, to actually share the burden what happened back then, it's just something mm -hmm. being seen by that has been really a blessing in that. So yeah. good. thankful for all of that. Praise God. Wow. And I, I can't wait to get back to it. Um, and I want to recommend it. To, they can all get it on Amazon, right? Yes. Under the Naga Tail by uh, Mace Bunseng Tang with James Tang, his son. And uh, it is well uh, worth. Let me explain the uh, the the name May Bunseng Tang. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I re recognize that in written form, it's very hard to understand Bunseng, which is his formal uh, name. But his May is actually his nickname okay. uh, that he went by, cool. which his whole family calls him by. So 
for the sake of brevity in the book and mm -hmm. it's a name mae it's kind of like a universal name mm -hmm. i went with that that's cool. um yeah. and it it goes it has a lot of commonality so that's that's cool. that so in the film it's bun saying uh -huh. um because you don't really need names but here because okay. you, you need names a lot. i, I grabbed it towards to, that yeah. Yeah. yeah well thank you for answering that question because i was getting, kind of curious and you provide maps and a timeline in here which i think is helpful because sometimes it's easy to get mixed up with all the political machinations and and, and try to remember um who's the leader and what freedom fighters were and where you were in that journey. And I think that that's definitely helpful. So folks, you can get this on Amazon. I highly recommend it. And I'm glad you guys came aboard. If you wouldn't mind, I'd love to pray for the two of you and for the continued success of this story. And uh, many, many people would, would purchase that book and read it. Amen. I just want to ask us just to pray for, for our safety because the reason I say that for protection and safety. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, after we finish the book, and uh, it's a true story. Those, yeah. The story had conflict to, to the country. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, so I uh, just want to pray for our protections and- uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, amen, that it be supported that God would uh, put his spirit around it and protect that effort, continued effort, amen. Well, let's go to the Lord. I'm gonna pray for you. God, thank you so much for this privilege of, of interviewing these two quality children of God, sons of God, um, father and son, on a project that a mankind could never script. And yet you worked it all out through the years you saw all that May went through, Lord. And, and uh, by your grace and mercy, you brought him to yourself. And he came to these states, this country, to find freedom and protection and safety, raise his own family. And Lord, I pray for, as, as he has asked, for protection, for any, anything the enemy would want to do to oppose this effort to get this story out to more people. Uh, Lord, that the lives of those who were lost in these terrible atrocities um, in harrowing times, this genocide, both of them, Lord, uh, but especially the second one that's not given too much attention. Not many people know about it. God, that you would open up the doors and that, Lord, uh, uh, that these two would be able to tell this story to more and more people uh, through media, through um, appearances, and again, through this book. Thank you, Father, for your love. And I pray you bless the two of them and all their efforts, Lord, and their health and strength. Thank you so much for all that you do. And Lord, this week, as we honor what you did for us and going all the way to the cross. What a harrowing time you went through uh, and died on the cross for our sin that we might know you and rise it again. Thank you, because that's what, what it's all about, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Let's stay in touch and, and uh, we'll email once in a while and see how the book's doing, James. And thank you so much for the copy. Uh, I will be encouraging people to read it. Just want to add the last, sure. last thing. Um, just hope to pray for hope one day that we able to build a memorial. Yes. At the yes. mountain. Yes. yes. Because we don't that happen, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, twelve, thirteen thousand of their life lost there, and I hope that one day we have something yes. memorial yes. to remember those people. Yeah. So is there anything with that, James, that you've like uh, groundwork of that? Um, I'm, uh, I think in the next few months, I may start to work on a blueprint. Okay. The idea is not just a memorial, but a museum. Museum we could walk uh, and, through. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the idea is to leave a testament of like the people's lives and yeah. the, the necessity for human rights and human dignity. Like, mm -hmm. why do we treat each other the same, um, equal, right? And this story plays well, tells that significant story there. Yeah. Um, so we would hope that a museum would stand as a symbol of that as well. Yeah. It's something that we need in our the times that we're living in, isn't it? Um, yeah. A reminder of, of that and how wicked the heart of man can be, but how good it can be on the other side of things. So, well, God bless you guys. And we'll be in touch. Yeah. 
I'll send you a copy of this by email, James, so you can have it. Thank Excellent. You. All Fabulous. right. God bless you. Have bless as well. Evening. Have a good evening, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.